I mean, you got to start with Fon Boule. He He was the runner of the meet. He was the athlete of the of the whole night. It started with that 100, which was surprisingly slow, to be honest. I mean, 10 flat to win this, looking at what that field was. You had people who had been running 9.8s, 9.7, wind aideds, and he goes out in the 100, and he is in dead last for, like, the first 70 meters. Dead last in a 100-meter dash. Typically, that's a bad way to run the 100 is being in last mm. with, like, 40 to 30 meters left. But it's Joseph, it's Joseph Fambula, and this is what he does. He is really good at sitting and kicking in sprint events. And he did that just there in the men's 100, wins it, yeah. and wins it easily. It wasn't even like he was in last place in that men's 100, but still was able to like destroy the field. It's not like he waited to the last moment to cross the line. He still destroyed the field in a sit and kick 100, 10 flat. Technically, it's a PB for him. Uh, mm -hmm. He's much better running the 10 flat. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. What a run there. And he beat some of the other guys, though. They just had bad days. Like, mm -hmm. Favor Ash, good to get that second place. But Micah Williams, man, what happened to him? He just fell off fell off the, the earth or planet. Yeah. It just didn't look like himself. Did not look like what I call the second best runner in the world. Comes in seventh. But, I mean, we could talk about all the other guys. But notably, Bambula, what was your thoughts on that first run that he had? Well, or his even first run was four by one. That's where I want to go. If you didn't know anything about Joseph Fambole heading into this meet and you just started watching from the beginning, he probably caught your eye in the four by one and you probably thought, ooh, that guy, he made up a lot of ground. USC ultimately won that race. Shout out to them for winning the four by one without the 60 meter champion who is injured. It shows you how deep USC is. But he had a deficit in that race too. And I was watching that race and I'm thinking, man, when he runs 100, he's running from a deficit. When he runs a 200, he's running from a deficit because he's coming out of blocks and his start is not good. In the 4 by one if he just got it even, what would happen? He, he could probably win this thing, but he got it in a deficit. They came back. They almost won, lost by a fraction of a second. Once I saw the 100, and you're right, a lot of it was the other guys um, didn't run. I mean, if you told me Williams is going to run north of 10 seconds, I just said, well, what, what happened? So, there was some, some issue yeah. there. But once Fambule won the 100, it was curtains for the 200. It was over. We all yeah. knew what was going to happen in the 200. That was, it was just stare at the clock the entire time because you knew his start would have had to have been absolutely glacial coming out of the blocks for him to lose. And I thought, Gordon, and I've watched a lot of his starts, they, I mean, they weren't great as compared to the, like, the times that he's running. But they were fine for him. Like, like, he's definite, like, he's definitely been slower out of the blocks. So the 200, to rip that time, to rip the 1983 number four all-time, I mean, blew out the field. I mean, that wasn't, wasn't close at all. And again, because we knew what he did in the 100, you know, last year didn't win the 100, and then he comes back, and you, you're a little bit surprised by the 200 because you're like, man, I thought the start would hurt him. You know all he has to do is mitigate that first 50 meters. He just has to lessen his losses in that first 50 60 meters and then the 200 he just has too much track there's just too much space for him to lose in a 200 yeah and uh it's just impressive to not only win convincingly but he won convincingly in, in very good fields the men's 100 which i mentioned yeah. a bunch of nine seven eight nine guys this 200 had makai harris who ran a uh, 19 what seven when dated yeah. 200 yeah. matthew bowling sub 200 a sub 20 guy you had yeah. the good this good stanford runner you had a bunch of other good guys i mean javante harding who didn't make the final but technically he was in the prelim he was a good runner in yeah. this field yeah. it was just an impressive dominance that i did not expect i i could see a world where he won both rent events but i did not see a world where he would dominate both events I could see it in the two. The yeah, hundred was surprising for me because, again, you just there's not enough time. You think for most people to make up that much of a gap, but the the two it wasn't surprising. I guess you could say the margin. I mean, was it 2013 back to bowling? 
And then Onwazarike of Stanford, 2015. Harris was 2045. They had a plus 0. 0.6. I looked at the weather midway through in the, in the 60s. So, you know, it wasn't super hot, ideal sprinting conditions. And that just makes his 198 that much more impressive. I agree with you on the men's side. Clear athlete of the meet. This was what we thought he could do when we watched the meet last year. Yeah, and I would say he probably clinched the Bowerman here. This is the, the most notable moment of the meet. It also is tied to them winning the team title. Mm -hmm. You know, you could argue Cunningham, which we'll talk about later in the pod with his incredible 110 hurdle. But I think after this, he didn't even run it. Did, did he run indoors? Fambule didn't even run indoors, right? He ran I mean, he indoors. He didn't qualify, qualify, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. I think kind of went from not qualifying indoors to being the, the dude, the guy. The dude. Yeah. 